so we should be streaming now. Uh, let me just make sure that, um, yeah, so all of the game capture and video capture are selected. So theoretically, people should uh, be able to hear and uh, see me now and also the game. Um, I don't know if that's true, but you should be able to see the game window now. I hope. I really hope. I have tried to figure this out so much and I have no way of knowing if it's true. Uh, let's log into, uh, give me just a moment to log into um, Twitch, which I will, I swear, one day remember to do before we actually start, but today is not that day. Let me also make sure that desktop audio is... Um, Wait, okay, now. Okay, so you should not be able to hear my desktop audio. You should be able to see me and you should be able to hear me. I'm gonna look closer to the mic though because I have a bad habit of not doing that. Uh, so let's pull up the dashboard. I swear I will remember to do this first one day. It will happen and it will be glorious. Slash dashboard. But currently that is not today, unfortunately. It will be, it will be, it will be. And I will try to send out a stream uh, notification. Um. Okay, the chat is here. Now I just need to find not the window I wanted. Uh. <laughs> um. Okay. No, that's the video preview, which was not what... Oh my goodness. I, I, where are the stats? Oh, oh, okay, right there. <clears throat> um, yeah, like I uh, said earlier, I am really new to Twitch and really new to streaming in general, and so I am learning all of this as I go. It's exciting. Um, but yeah, some of that will be figuring things out on stream, and I apologize for that. But anyway, we uh, should be streaming now. If someone could let me know in the chat whether you can hear me and if you have any vision um, whether you can see the game window that would be lovely if not I will um, assume that all is well and uh, and just proceed as though all is well and uh, yeah <clears throat> So while I am waiting to hear that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the character that we established in the uh, first chapter of this game, with whom we will continue the story today. So their name is Maya Bell. They are a um, gender queer, um, to use modern terminology, I, I consider them bi-gender, um, main character who has grown up 
the son of two heroes in this very small village. Um, and they've been growing up hearing like war stories and stuff from their mother for, for, uh, we don't know how old this character is, but I'm going to say, you know, kind of entering adulthood from young adult, um, just based on, uh, some of the things that were mentioned in the last chapter. Um, you can actually now watch, um, the last playthrough on YouTube. Um, if you can find me, unfortunately, I cannot yet get a public, um, uh, I cannot yet get a public uh, custom URL. Um, every follower that I can get on YouTube will put me closer to being able to do that. So if you could follow me there, uh, that would be great. Um, also, you get to see uh, the introduction of these characters. But um, until then, let me find... I meant to do this last time, but I did not. So let me find my... Um, YouTube channel information and paste that in the chat. I'll try to read it, but it's generally a pretty long, uh, actually I put this in chat in my Skype, I'll just read it from there. I probably shouldn't say this on the stream, but Dang, the latest version of Skype takes like a billion years to actually load a chat. I don't know why. I don't know. It's fairly recent. I wish it didn't. That's really annoying. Uh, but it does. So that's that's cool. Okay, let me paste this into the chat for people who would like to follow me there. Hello and welcome to the stream, Blind GM. I appreciate your being here. I'm pasting uh, the YouTube link for following me on YouTube. Um, I don't, I, that should work. Um, I, as I had said, if people follow me on YouTube, I can get a better URL, uh, that is, uh, custom. That's a little easier for people to remember, hopefully. So that's, uh, the in, in, in intent eventually. Um, so yeah, so this character, uh, who was, we, we named Mayabel, Mayabel. Um, became friends with a troll named Gronpit. And we don't know a lot about troll culture. We know um, that they are a group, that, <clears throat> excuse me, they are a member of a group of uh, races called the Servitor Races, uh, which in the war that your parents fought in, um, someone named Haritha used uh, a, a dark axe called Ron to um, control the servitor races and bind them to her will. We don't really know how that works or um, much about, you know, much about that except just a little bit of hearsay from our mother. So, um, Hatch, that's my coffee cup, I apologize. We live in the village of Hetch in um, the Pine tribe and uh, our friend Grumpet the troll, who was a peddler, has started acting kind of weird lately. And we don't really know why. It's implied that some witch of the woods has awakened and um, is learning to do something and possibly calling the, the servitor races back to her. We also know there's a lot of lore just in that first chapter. Um, I'm trying to not summarize all of it, but all but give like the most important things. But I, the problem is I don't yet know exactly what will be important. So um, we know that there is your you and uh, Grompit have a fascination with this thing called the Impossible Empire, which is um, an old empire that was run on technology and uh, the souls of damned gods. We know that um, the light gods set, uh, I think his name was Akamon, the god of destruction who was imprisoned in the in the philosophy machine. Uh, it has a cool fantasy name, but I do not remember what it is. So the fantasy, the, the philosophy machine, um, for one minute uh, was released onto the surface, and in that time managed to completely annihilate the uh, impossible empire in one minute. And, uh, so that's not good. <laughs> um, 
my Braille display just unconnected. So let me reconnect that and then we will get started. I apologize for the delays here. I need to get a little, okay, there we go, it did reconnect. Um, a little like, I don't know, some way to keep from having to summarize this all, all every time um, we start. Uh, but okay, here we go. Again, if someone could tell me whether we can, whether we, um, the game window is visible to you guys, that would be great. But <clears throat> chapter two, the pit. Full of doubts and schemes, you returned to Hetch late that night, Hetch being the village that you grew up in, to find um, to find the town dark and quiet. Your mother might have built Hetch from a village into a modest town, but most people here are still farmers or um, herders, and uh, they retire early. The houses of Hetch are all round, with windowless stone walls and thatched, thatched roofs. Each is identical except for uh, the adornments outside, such as idols, carvings around the doorways, or um, flower gardens. You and your mother occupy a house much like the others with three knotwork carved beams um, that frame its single door. So that's pretty. It's, it's thatch roof slopes almost to the ground um, where uh, it shields firewood from the rain on one side and serves as the roof of a chicken coop on the other. So uh, very economical. I think that that honestly says a lot about um, your mother's sort of aesthetics. Um, so I love that these details actually do uh, illustrate something about character and they're, they're, they, they aren't completely random. Um, so a little cap on the roof allows smoke to escape without letting the rain in. Only the wooden idol of Cadmus, your mother's god, marks out the house as the people of Pine favor Yoon, god of crafts. So yeah, in our stats screen, our grace is renowned and we know that um, Yoon guides our hands or, or, or is believed to guide our hands um, I accidentally scrolled back further than I meant to my apologies oh no <laughs> um, unfortunately your mother is already asleep behind the carved screen that um, demarcates her space Questions will have to wait. You crawl up to your uh, you crawl up to your raised loft and rest. Night brings dark dreams, jumbled images, ground pits scurrying through tunnels on all fours, like a rat. A woman with a golden mask who uh, moans with despair. The dark priestess Haritha as your mother always described her, laughing as flames and wind consume her. Both burning hands wrapped around her demonic axe. And we get no choices here. So not a pleasant evening for you, unfortunately. Uh, I like that there are passages for scene setting though. Um, I, were there, I don't remember any particular lore things that were in that passage that I didn't address. Uh, so you awaken early after a near sleepless night to find your mother already dressed. She watches you with a troubled expression. I suppose you spent all night wandering the woods with Grumpet, she says. Ah, of all the trolls 
in the north. Why that useless dreamer? The trolls come here to trade and to assure us there will not be another war. Not to discuss philosophy and ancient, uh, ancient ruins. Um, she saws at a loaf of dark bread, her bronze knife gleaming in the dawn light that uh, floods through the open window or open door, sorry. <clears throat> People wander past outside trying to listen in on the chieftain. You consider your words carefully trying to figure out how to placate your mother. How can you justify your time with Grumpit in a way that she and the rest of the Pine tribe would understand? You could try charming your mother with um, tales of uh, trollcraft and Grumpit's, uh, Grumpit's repair skills, though she will interrogate you about these techniques. A child with knowledge of the natural world might describe the trolls' game trails, which your mother would like to know about. Or you could simply endure your mother's complaints with stoicism and di di diplomatic skill uh, that you might seem like a dutiful child uh, to the gossips skulking outside okay so we know that our our character has a little bit of a tinkering fascination from her father uh, also note that I use she and her for the main character interchangeably uh, she her and they uh, but for NPCs that have defined genders um, I would I would like to use um, whatever pronouns they have listed so we have Grandput is brilliant his repair skills and smithing are peerless I flash my best smile and describe his work relying on what I know of crafting or the trolls have their own clever paths through the woods you know they almost never use the roads I need to impress my nature lore upon my mother or I stoically instore my mother's anger and diplomatically defect her accusations. It's true that the trolls can be frustrating. So we have established that um, Maya Bell has a little bit of um, a different, a, a strained relationship with her mother. I think she respects, they respect each other, um, but they each kind of think the other's chosen weird skills to, to be fascinated by. So... I think typically this character would endure, uh, but right now after after Grandpit's sort of desertion, they feel the need to, to defend them a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna go with Grandpit is brilliant. His repair skills and smithing are peerless. And they do all that without a forge, you conclude. As your mother nods, uh, absorbing everything you've told her, you mop up the last scraps of honey and uh, butter with your bread. Impressive, she says. Trolls make so little. But they know how to maintain what they have, you say. Even the smallest piece of copper, the trolls um, <clears throat> uh, 
can rework into something of value. Our artisans have grown wasteful as they have grown rich, your mother says. She drains the last of her small beer. Uh, yeah. Are we day drinking? It looks like we're day drinking. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so um, yeah, your mother's day drinking. That's great. Um, she drains the last of her small beer uh, and uh, comes to a decision. This is valuable information, my child. I can pay one of these trolls to teach our people not to squander our metal. Her mind occupied with thoughts of wasteful artisans, she asks you no questions about Gronpit himself. While your mother attends to a small uh, line of petitioners outside, you clean the house and get dressed, uh, throwing your blue-gray shroud around your shoulders. So we did learn in the last, um, I, try, I, don't, I don't like to interrupt, but uh, we did learn in the last playthrough of this game that um, trolls, or I'm sorry, that uh, people who are um, non-binary have a special outfit that they wear, um, which is not uh, very out uncommon outside certain um, regions, but that the dark archer who fought alongside your... Um, or the something archer, silver archer? I don't remember what her title was or what their, their title was, my apologies. Um, fought alongside your parents and helped to overthrow Haritha, the dark priestess who was controlling the servitor races. So um, the only other, we do have one other gender, uh, gender queer um, NPC, which I'm very excited about. So um, then you step outside into the sun. The Pine Tribe is busy with preparations for the troll's uh, arrival and with the everyday business of manufacture and trade. Laborers are rolling up the sleeves of their uh, plain wool tunics, eager to start work on the unfinished temple to Yoon. Their breath streams in the cold morning air. Local overseers and merchants, eager to uh, impress visiting temples, temple uh, functionaries, wear brightly um, patterned clothing with checks, squares, Sea Kingdom um, Mian. Let's see. Yeah, so we we actually learned a little bit about the the different um cultures here. So yeah, sea kingdom, sea kingdom meanders, and uh, desert empire stripes. The people of Pine regard the form of all their crafts, including. Uh, their textiles as essentially perfect and so only their colors and patterns vary. After dealing with the petitioners, your mother does not head directly to the, um, the Great Hall to conduct the day's business or to um, the rectangular pit that demarcates the um, future location of the new temple. Instead, she looks at you. I have not seen you studying, Mayabel. Have you been following in your father's footsteps as I asked? As you approach adulthood, your mother has been um, increasingly insistent that you maintain the skills your father taught you before he died, and so acknowledge uh, your filial your filial debt. 
you suspect that she also wants to avoid um, her obligation in the Great Hall and would like a demonstration of what you've learned. Okay, so um, our father, in addition to teaching us um, a lot of uh, uh, basically mariner skills and um, tinkering and electronic-y stuff, engineering work, not electronics, but engineering stuff, was also a thief. So I'm very, uh, I'm not sure how we're going to demonstrate this, but okay. Yes, I remember my father's lessons in woodcraft um, and practice the traditional hunting arts is one of our options. Or, yes, I listened as my father taught me to sail and row, and I've even made a few improvements to his technique. Or, my father suffered in my, my tell because he was ignorant of its politics. I won't make that mistake. I've listened closely to my mother's counsel. My father wasted his time time wandering these woods. I've devoted myself to craft, especially the forging of bronze. Um, I think the wasting his time option doesn't really fit our character. We have established... Oh, okay, I see, okay. Uh, the blind GM says that small beer is only lightly alcoholic and for a while was used when water was unsafe. Now it is used for a uh, day drinking. Um, okay, cool. But did not actually know that. Or I knew that sometimes they drink alcohol for, for that, but I, I wasn't aware that it was like that common. So interesting. Um... We're going to go with, yes, my father, um, I listened as my father taught me how to sail and row. I've even made a few improvements to his technique because I think that goes along with the tinkering that we have talked about. Um, and I think we established that um, the father was not from here. I can't remember if that's true, though. So we're going to go with that anyway. Okay. Um... <laughs> that's fine yeah the same um, I'm playing this on my phone too so I have to click these options on both so okay there we go have you? Para says one eyebrow raised she inclines her head towards uh, the docks the thaw has begun you and Para head to um, the Lavona River. That's a pretty name. L-U-V-O-N-A. Luvona? Luvona, yeah. Um, head to the, the Luvona River. Near the docks, the river is broad enough that it's easy to navigate, even with um, Yeah, blah, 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 sorry, I skipped a line. Um, that it's easy to navigate even with the meltwater flowing down from the mountains. Only larger boats are out now, but you and your mother check and recheck your uh, little cor coracle? I don't know what a coracle is. Uh, based on a traditional trial design or tribal design sorry based on a traditional tribal design um, used for navigating the swift rivers of the northern forest the pine tribe has improved its um or 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 locks giving the small river craft exceptional maneuverability perhaps um you Uh, let's see. Perhaps you and Nathia, the boatwright's daughter, could travel down river tomorrow. I like the name Nathia. It's pretty. Ah, uh, yes. Your mother says as she helps you get the craft ready. After you demonstrated the 
cleverness of your father's design in that boat race last year, um, we started making um, we started making copies. Uh, oh my goodness, no. Siri, why in the heck did that trigger Siri? And no, I didn't say anything that even sounded like staples. It wants me to find staples. Anyway, um, we started making copies of those boats. I suppose your father would be proud. By midday, you and Para start to wind your way back towards the Great Hall. Or towards the Great Hall. What a shame, a bright, clear voice behind you says, to hear... Our great chieftain and her child are going in public again. What a... Okay, well, this person is uh, already already making a nuisance. Ermish, the town's priest of Yoon, glides, glides down the road, flame-orange cape billowing dramatically behind him, and smoothly steps between you and Para. Though taller than either of you, Para... Uh, Yumish, sorry, Ermish. U R M I S H, Ermish. Um, Ermish is nonetheless neither a hunter nor a warrior, nor is he even a priest. He is an initiate, um, able to make the craft god's sign, but unable to manifest real power. His robe holds fewer solar motifs and radi radiating lines than a full priest's. His cap and collar are not quite so tall, and no amulets hang from his woven mantle. He does his best to hide the truth, and you weren't exactly arguing with your mother, but Ermish sees what he wants. This close to the Great Hall, the town's gossips are wealthy, are wealthy traders, riverboat captains, and diplomats from the other tribes. Recognizing Ermish's desire to associate himself with the chieftain, your mother says, I'll leave you two children to talk, and takes the stone steps, two at a time, into the great hall. The hall's guards step aside to let you pass, but Ermish glides in front of you, blocking your path up the steps. As, uh, blocking your path up the steps. As always, he is eager to gossip and desperate to impress. And as usual in situations like this, you can either command him away, Ermish. I have work to do inside. Or, I have work today in the hall. Step aside. Or, I tell the plain truth. Ermish, I have great... I have work today. Um, or, I listen. Ermish may be a petty gossip, but he is our priest and he deserves respect. Uh, okay. I think she's grown up hearing the tales of actual people who do things. Um, and so I don't think she has a lot of respect for just general pomp. So I definitely don't think that um, she's going to be particularly respectful. So I'm going to, yeah, she's going to command him out of the way. Um, she, uh, I don't think this is because she is like the child of, of um, people who have done great things so much as it's just she doesn't respect bluster um and is a little bit contemptuous of that so that's what we shall choose As usual, you wave him aside, and as usual, he blanches with genuine fear at your commanding presence, but somehow manages to remain in your way. Oh, I really don't like this guy. Okay. Um, Mayabal, have you heard? Ermish says, pitching his voice so that the supplicants on the stone bench nearby can hear. Traders from the Hazel and Oak tribes say they've seen... Ex Storm has said... Traders from the Hazel and Oak tribes say that they've seen storm raiders. 
not just river pirates, but real storm raiders. People say the storm raiders live at the edge of the world where the sea tumbles into the endless void. Every few centuries, they return to raid the three, raid the three nations and load their treasures into their world ships. The last attacks occurred a century ago and already sound like myths. If they come here, well, they'll face the wrath of Yoon. I can tell you that, Ermish says. He makes the sign and a few supplicants instinctively flinch away before they realize uh, that while the young man can make the correct gesture, he can't actually do anything with it. Uh, all right, so our options here are I let Ermish rant. His ability to achieve full priesthood is not his fault, and I pity him. They'll face the wrath of Yoon the second my mother hires an actual priest. Ermish is pathetic. Or I counsel Ermish on ways to improve his arts. You could use these rumors... Um, to call a full disciple to teach you. Um, hmm. This guy doesn't seem like someone who's particularly interested in improving or having his ineptitude pointed out. So I don't think she would say... I think she's a little just tired of dealing with him. So... Uh, I think she thinks he's a little bit pathetic, even if she wouldn't necessarily say so. So that's what we're going with. Oh, she did say that. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Well, whatever. He's he's a... Um... Oh, he's so sad. Your mother chose me, Maya Bell. Ermish cries, his voice breaking a little. Oh, I didn't, I didn't mean to like... Oh, whatever. It, he's kind of rude. My mother's choice was you or no one, you remind him. Maybe she chose wrong. Wow, okay. And what is she choosing to do about all these storm raiders? Ermish says, raising his voice and smiling as he t tries to turn the rumor into a panic. In fact, your mother is already familiar with the storm raider rumors. Though she suspects they are mere river pirates using the name to bolster their reputation, she already had you investigate... Um, an Oak Tribe trader and ill-reputed blackguard named Dace, rumored to engage in occasional piracy, visited Hedge a few days ago, and your mother assigned you to watch him. Telling everyone what happened to Captain Dace should help calm the people who are now listening to Ermish. So, an able climber, I climbed a tree to watch Captain Dace's boat for any illicit activity. Or when Dace went into town, I picked the lock on his chest and searched it for contraband, which is probably what we will go with. Expecting trouble, my mother expect it. Um, my mother had me row out to Dace's boat and examine it up close. Or I spoke to Dace's quartermaster and asked about anything that might imply criminal acti activity. Um... Or trusting my archery skills, my mother had me follow Dace's crew around with three warriors armed with bows. Um, so I think there are actually two options which we could do here that would make sense. Which are examining his boat up close or picking the lock on his chest and searching for contraband. Both of these are skills that we have um, learned I'm pretty indifferent. If someone, if you would like to choose which of these we do, I think those are the two that make most sense for the character. But um, as to whichever one, um, I'm I'm willing to um, have opinions on this. Where are two drunken knights, uh, freshly returned from the crusade, when you need them? The blind GM asks. I, well, I don't know. So are we picking this lock or are we examining the boat? I'm going to go get water um, just for a sec because <clears throat> uh, I'm having some trouble reading clearly today. I don't know why.
don't see an answer in chat as to anyone's preferences, so we're going to lock pick then. Because it's interesting. Burglary isn't exactly honorable work, but your parents taught you a number of unusual skills. Slipping onto the docks, you opened one of Dace's storage chests, but found nothing of value then. Perhaps, um... Of no nothing of value then, perhaps having developed an instinct for this sort of criminality, um... You noticed the odd thump thump of wood beneath the dock. You retreated just as Daze's crew pulled several casks out from under the dock and loaded them onto the boat. You decide not to tell everyone about your lockpicking skills and focus instead on Daze's criminal enterprise. <clears throat> My mother had me investigate Captain Dace, you say. He was smug smuggling Arathonian wine up north. That's why she ran him out of town before the trolls arrived. Those are your storm raiders, boy. Uh, an an apple tribe merchant shouts at Ermish from the top of the steps to the relieved laughter of the other supplicants. Some nasty old smuggler with animal tattoos and his band of bravos. You wonder if Dace identified you as the one responsible. You hope not, as rumors circulate that his banishment from Hetch made the tattooed smuggler a dangerous, desperate man. Yikes. So we might actually have a um, a personal enemy here. <laughs> Oops. Armish shrinks with embarrassment and irritation, then waves you towards the, lip, the pit that laborers have finally finished clearing for the new temple. Are you going to treat me that way when the temple is complete, Mybel? Armish says. Your mother may be chieftain, but she's still a foreigner. I was born here, and people know me. More importantly, I bear an impeccable lineage. Here it comes. Not merely my bloodline, either. I can trace my... Um, I can trace my sign back to the beginning. He's going to do it. I learned from Selt, student of Rith Rathen, student of Kesser, student of Gareth, student of Chorus, student of Dedarshi, Student of Ferida, student of Zazes, student of Kaferi, student of Bromarchus, student of Kerber, student of Nithius, student of Lurse, student, student of. I, this is way too long. Of, uh, tier of student of Naringi. Okay, blah, 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 blah. So lots of students of. Until we get to. Um, Student of Naringi, the first high priest of Yun after the restoration of the temples. Uh, okay, so we did learn last time that a lot of the uh, faithful had died <clears throat> in the last war and that the disciples had sort of become greedy and, uh, and uh, venal was the word used. Um, basically, yeah, it, it seems like people are less dedicated to the old gods and to... Um, sort of <clears throat> the the stronger worship that had uh, predated this war so that's not entirely um the legacy that he kind of thinks it is he looks at you as though expecting you to be impressed by this now familiar repetition out of respect for the gods you nod reverently when i'm a full priest of yun with my own temple what would your what will your mother do yurish um asks or ermish says um, poor Ermish. Our town needs a disciple. Maybe some new technique will give Ermish the power he needs. Have you considered studying under the holy scholars of Rowan? There's no reason to be honest with Yermish, since he never spots my lies anyway. Maybe you're right. We're, we'll work on getting this temple built. My mother will respect you then. Or I try the un varnished truth however scandalous it is par does not trust you or the gods ermish you're wasting your time um yeah she's a little bit proud so we're gonna go with that third option
Par does not you trust you or the gods. Uh, you're wasting your time. Okay. You tell yourself that your callous words are an act of mercy. Ermish will never thrive in Hitch. Your mother does not trust him, and without the full blessing of Yoon, she cannot even use him. The new temple will not save him. But as you start to talk, Ermish cuts you off. Maybe they're not the real Storm Raiders, he says, veering suddenly back to that topic. Maybe they're only river pirates. But I hear some of them are dark priests, and others are worse, spell thieves. No lineage at all, though they make the sign. And you must know that the kidnapped princess Hyrani, Hyrani, daughter of King Hyrus of the Sea Kingdom, vanished from the great temple of Amithi last summer. Rumors have blamed everyone from troll bandits to war-mad nymphs to the ghost of Haritha herself is not there, but, uh, oops. <clears throat> You approach the uh, edge of the rectangular pit and look down. Laborers are hard at work preparing the foundation of the temple. Amid the dirt, you see old idols recovered from some previous settlement, crude clay figures that nonetheless encouraged the pine tribes to build here. More clay idols lie in an unsorted heap next to you. They say she wears a golden mask and captains one of their boats. Ermish says. That's one rumor you haven't heard before. You glance back at Ermish, trying to gauge how far to believe that un unlikely sounding claim. I really hope that's true, because I think this princess is going to be very awesome if she is actually a pirate queen. I I'm very here for this. I hope that's I hope that's right. Oh man, that'd be so good. And then a scream rises up from down below. You turn to see workers backing away from a circle of disturbed earth near the old idols. Then three trolls burst out of the earth. They've tunneled into the pit from below, eyes bright and mad. They slash at the workers with, um, with copper knives. More burst out of the tunnel and more until there are a dozen trolls down below and panicked workers trying to scramble up the walls of the pit, unable to escape. Yikes. We do not know if Cron Pit is among these trolls. Yes, won't somebody rid me of this turbulent priest? I, I don't like him, so I do hope. Uh, yeah. Uh, a good uh, a good lesson in um, being careful what you say when you have power. But um, I, I would, yeah, there might be a, a good use case for it here. Although I thought it was meddlesome. I don't know. Uh, the old quote's been uh, mis misgiven a couple times, I think. Covered in dirt, the trolls blend into the walls of the pit. Everything except their bright, mad little eyes and their sharp, um, and their sharp blades. A laborer, his hand slashed by a copper axe, stumbles against the ladder and it falls, trapping everyone down below. Several trolls grab the idols. Others have already stolen tools and are trying to find their way back into the tunnels on the side of the pit. Even as more trolls try to push their way back up to the surface. Okay, so this seems disorganized. This is not, um, this is more of a raid, it looks like, than like a full-fledged, um, attack, per se. This seems to be about, um, getting things and just wanton destruction more than, like, we have to kill all these people in an organized wave. Because it looks like they would not have fared well if they had, like, tunneled out, um, for an actual organized raid here. Okay, um, yeah, it's also interesting that we had not really seen the trolls being martial up to this point. Um, we were sort of told that they wielded um, spears and, was it spears and sticks, basically, uh, in the previous war under the command of the Dark Axe, but had not really seen them um, being martial in in. Um, an organized way, per se. Despite the shouting and commotion, the guards across the square um, at the steps of the Great Hall have noticed nothing. You might need their help to stop this. <clears throat> 
So first things first, Armish needs to get the guards while I do something about the guards. I am not trusting this person to do much of anything that is um, useful. I sprint to the guards and tell them what's happening. Speed and experience as a runner will matter um, more than eloquence. Or I find a clay idol of Cadmus, the god's, guard's favorite god, um, in the collection and raise it high to get the god's attention. Or there's no time to waste, I jump into the pit. Uh, <laughs> this is a mistake, but I feel like this person would really want to prove themselves and so want to like be in the center of it, even though that's not really where their strengths are. Um, so I think we're going to jump into the pit, which is probably not a good idea. You can't wait on the guards. Without fear or hesitation, you drop, drop down into the pit to confront the trolls. Another scream as three trolls seize Nathia, the boatwright's daughter. She was down there with the laborers, and now the trolls are trying to drag her de back down into the tunnel. Okay, so we have a hostage. I wonder why they uh, seem to only want that hostage. And, or uh, anyway, the trolls are grabbing as many metal tools as they can carry. They're here to steal, not to kill, but they have copper knives and axes for killing if they need to. The same mad madness you saw in Grompet's eyes burns in theirs. Two still hold on to Nathia, and the young woman is fighting them with savage ferocity. However, she is unarmed, and the two armed trolls are starting to reconsider their kidnapping plans in favor of just killing her. Three more trolls have gra gra grabbed particularly well-crafted clay idols of Phi and Yoon. Others just run around, threatening the laborers, dragging pine tribe tools back into the tunnel with them, or climbing up out of the pit to raid the town directly. You can fight the trolls, of course, or try to scare them off. Or you can see that the trolls have constructed a... Or you can see that the trolls have constructed a rough wooden support for their tunnel pulling the support tunnel the support out might collapse the tunnel though it may cost hetch a few of those ancient idols another possibility is to see ermish's help rallying the laborers you look up just as ermish slints away from the edge of the pit so much for that plan yeah i was i was not um expecting ermish to be particularly useful here um so we can lay into the trolls with all of their strength, all of the with a shovel and all our strength to rescue Nathia. We can use our fiercest voice and knowledge of religion to ask the trolls to drop the the idols in the name of um, of the gods. If I remove the support struts from the tunnels, it should should collapse. Stopping more trolls from raiding the town. Um. Yeah, we don't have a lot of strength physically, but we also don't. We I like. I think she wants to be a little bit of a hero here, so she'll try to um. Try to actually attack them with the shovel, even though I think maybe trying to collapse the tunnel is probably a better use of her skills, but um. Yes. Uh, the blind GM starts singing, I fell into uh, I fell into the pit. I don't remember what the tune of this is. It's from uh, Parks and Rec, right? Uh, I fell into the pit. You fell into the pit. We all fell into the pit. Yes. Um, a good season one uh, call back to Parks and Rec. So. Yeah, we're going to attack these trolls. The work pit offers several tools that are more, much more dangerous than the troll's hammer. Uh, hammered copper blades, I'm sorry. You grab a wooden shovel, testing its weight. The trolls holding Nathia abandon the girl and bare their teeth while raising their axes. They look savage and terrible, their eyes burning red. You raise your shovel, shovel but the little creatures are incredible, incredibly fast. They lash out with their copper axes, and though you buffet one troll to the, 
ground, the other slashes your arm, and you fall into the dirt. Then there's a deafening crack, and you lose your balance, landing on hands and knees. Did one of the trolls get behind you and hit you? No, it's not that. One of the wooden support struts that maintains the pit's shape has snapped. Everything shakes. The dirt beneath your hands turns, and then suddenly the ground gives way, and you find yourself falling down into darkness. Next. So, yeah. Not good for us. Let's take a look at our stats really quick to see if we have um, just been using stats or if we would have increased uh, our stats in this. So our grace is unmatched still. Our bearing is well-mannered. Our resolve is average, as is our wisdom and uh, as it's our wisdom, while our might is feeble. So that's unchanged. We are a skilled burglar and a skilled mariner and a competent artisan. That's, I think, also unchanged. Ah, this is different. Okay. So our command is 51% and our council is 49 Basically, how likely are we to step up and be the one to push things along versus listening to other people? So um, yelling at that priest gave us uh, an extra point of command. I knew I wanted to yell at that priest. Okay. <laughs> we are 49% honest and 51% trickery. We are 41% merciful and 59% wrathful. We are 48% innovative and 52% uh, traditional. I don't think that has changed. We are now injured. Um... I'm going to look at the uh, renown and relationship as well to see if our uh, making fun of this priest has diminished our reputation in town. Um, nope, we have not yet distinguished ourselves and we are well regarded in town. So apparently the priest did not have enough reputation in town that making fun of him lost us ours. Interesting. Uh... Is there anything else that we need to look at while we are here? No, there is not. Okay. Um, at any point, if anybody wants me to read anything from the Codex, I read a little bit of it last time, but if there's ever anything that you want me to look at, I'm happy to do so. Let's see the achievements. I don't think we've gotten any. Uh, no, we have not. We have one achievement that I unlocked from a previous playthrough of this game. Um, as I said last time, I've played through four chapters of this game, so not super far. Um, uh, and I haven't played it extensively. So this is not quite a brand new playthrough, a, bl right, a blind playthrough, um, but it basically is because uh, I don't know a ton about this game. So Oh, TBC, uh, uh, the Two Big Chickens is... Uh, also tuned into our stream. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Um, we will be doing Evertree Inn in a little bit as well, if you um, want to be around for that. Uh, or at least I intend to. I hope to. Uh, I'd like to finish this chapter um, and then uh, and then do a little more Evertree Inn, possibly with a break between. So that is the plan. Uh, but yeah, welcome. I'm really glad you could tune in. Uh, could you tell me whether you can actually see the game this time? Because you, I, I really hope that I've set this up correctly so that you can now see the game and possibly me. Let's see what she says. I wish these had timestamps because I have no indication of when chats were actually sent, unfortunately. Oh, it's still a blank screen. That shouldn't be the case. Let me look at this one more time. It says it's captured. Um, it says game capture is selected. So I don't know why you wouldn't be able to see the game. <sighs> but 
that's really annoying. Um, let me delete that and then set it back up really quick and see if that fixes it. So let's see, we're going to add window capture. Uh, we want to add, I think, no, we want to, do we want to add existing or create new? I don't really know how this works. Um, make source visible. Did that work? No, there shouldn't be a button on your end that you need to push. It's um, setting up the window capture correctly through um, OBS for me, which I, I'm still figuring out how to do. Um, I tried adding the cap game capture window uh, but I'm not sure if it actually worked. If in worst case scenario, I can um, try to like stream our, the full desktop, but I don't really want to do that. I'm assuming it's still not there. Let me Google something really quick. Still seeing a blank space. All right. Um, gonna try one more thing. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Well, we're going to do this then. Um, it's going to be the whole desktop, but I think it should at least work, which is not ideal, but oh well. So... Come on. Okay. Okay, so you should be seeing my entire um, desktop now. If this is not working, I, I have no idea what else to try. Yay! Chibi Chicken says success and uh, the blind GM says careful to close Skype and any windows you don't want to see. Yeah, I do that before I stream anyway, typically, um, just so that it doesn't... Uh, I don't, I don't, I find those really distracting, so. Um, yeah, I don't really know why I couldn't get the single window to capture, but whatever. All right. <clears throat> you awaken to the faint clatter of stones, the gentle hiss of dirt sliding down uh, a slope. A dim shaft of daylight filled with drifting motes illuminates the heap of earth and stones on which you landed. The opening is far overhead. You can't see anyone above, but several dead trolls lie around you. Nothia lies near one of them. Ignoring your own wounds, you rise and check her quickly. The fall killed her. Oops. Uh, well, well, okay. Oops. I was trying to not... Oops. Okay, well. Oops. In the darkness and amid the heaps of stones and broken bodies it takes you a moment to notice the idols these aren't the cruel clay figurines you saw crude sorry these aren't the crude clay figurines you saw above now smashed and scattered almost indistinguishable from the jagged stones beneath your feet no these are five tall and ancient figures the gods of your ancestors they appear simply but elegantly carved and Time has stripped the lacquer from the wooden street and let's see. They appear simply but elegantly carved. And time has stripped the lacquer from the wood and streaked them with lines of water and salt. Those accursed trolls. I look around in case there are more of them to fight. I fade into the shadows in case there are more trolls. I examine the unfamiliar and wondrous idols. Or these ruined idols can't help me. I look for a way to climb out. Um. I think I want to look at these idols really quick. I think, um. Mm. It's hard to justify when she's very torn up about having accidentally killed that person. But I think I think she doesn't want to like think about that yet, and so she's gonna look at the idols. You let's check the chat really quick. Okay, nothing of the chat. Um you see each of the five heavenly gods depicted with their patron animals. Yoon with a beard of bees. Oh my gosh, that is nightmare fuel. I do not want to think about that. Oh my gosh. Why would you write that? Um, that's terrifying. Uh, <laughs> okay, anyway. Just uh, just picture that for a second uh, with me and then we will, we will carry on. Uh, Phi riding a seal. Cadmus riding an ox. Mithy with a cat on her shoulder. I knew I liked her. And um, Amiria with a flamingo on hers, its wings draped across her upper body. 
The designs are strange and elongated in style, it, or the designs are strange and elongated. In style, they resemble the mosaics that you and Grompit used to study in the ruins of the Impossible Empire. Maya Bell. It's Lycan, the, or Lycan? I think we're going to go with Lycan. The Redsmith, Redsmiths. I'm not sure what a Redsmith is. Anybody know? It's Lycan, the Red, Lycan, the Redsmith's son, looking down on you through the hole. He sees Nothia illuminated by the shaft of light and the color drains from his face. I'm sorry. Oh my god, I feel so bad. <laughs> uh, as people move around above, more dirt spills into the chamber you're in. This cavern isn't permanent. Unless you get out now, you fear the whole structure may collapse and become your tomb. You'll need to climb. So the way out is a mix of crumbling dirt and loose rock. You could reach it by climbing up one of the idols, probably Cadmus. The dirt is full of roots. Um, and if you're strong enough and know enough about how root systems work, you should have no trouble with the climb. Or you could get on Amiria's head and leap dramatically from her to Amithi's outstretched, outstretched arm, then back to the surface. That would be impressive but dangerous. Finally, any sensible person would just yell for help. It may not be heroic, but it's safest. <clears throat> um, is there any other way out, a side passage or tunnel that we can fit through? I rely on raw strength and my knowledge of roots and rocks to haul myself out. Moving nimbly, I move nimbly. I moving nimbly, I leap from the statue of Amiria up to the surface, relying on my athletic training. Or I'm not taking any chances. I politely ask for help and have Lakin lower me a rope. Um. Hmm. See, if there wasn't a body here that we also needed to get out, I would say that you try the leaping thing. Uh, but I think she doesn't like asking for help. That doesn't feel right exactly, but uh, I think it is probably the best way to get the body out, and she doesn't want to just leave the body down here. So that's what we're going to do, and that's why. Um, I don't like it. It's a little out of character, but it... It seems to make sense uh, with the complication of the body. I am not strong, but I am graceful, says the blind GM. That is true, um, and that probably would have been the most successful path out, um, except that I couldn't. I don't think she could do that and carry the body, so that's why uh, I didn't do that. Otherwise, yeah, I, I probably would have done that. There's a great deal of shouting and arguing, but in a matter of moments, a rope drops into the pit. You loop it around a broken shovel so you can stand on it, then give it a tug. Working together, Lakin Le Le and several laborers pull you up. They are relieved to see you still alive. The dirt shifts and churns beneath your feet. We need to get out, the last laborer says. Not yet, Lakin says. Nothia. He hands you the rope that you just used to escape, then drops down into the pit. Uh, you hold on as the last labor flees the crumbling pit. After several more seconds, the redsmith's son appears with a dead girl's body. Let's go, he says. Everyone gets clear as the dirt settles with a wump. Okay, I thought we were going to try to like haul her out while we did, but I guess uh, that works too. You fool! It's Ermish. Of course it is. His flame orange robes are still immaculate, immaculate, though a thick layer of dirt and muck close coats everyone else. He strides through the laborers as if he were their lord and master. 
Exhausted and overawed, they defer to him, stiffing away so they don't sully his cape. Why did you fight the trolls? Now they'll be back to fight, uh, to get revenge now that you've killed some of them. None of the laborers seem willing to challenge the initiate of Yoon. Grabbing the initiate, I shout, I fought while you ran away. Or, you're lying. You ran away, and I had to try and stop the trolls. People will respect my honesty. I ignore Ermish, instead uh, attending to the injured with steady hands. Let people see <clears throat> let people see what I do, instead of listening to Ermish. I'm a warrior, and we need to be ready for danger. Ignoring Ermish, I grab a weapon and start to patrol. People will recognize my resolve. Uh, I think she's mad at this point, so she's going to grab him. Um, I don't think it will win her any favors in, in town. Um, but yeah, I mean, she has just witnessed her first death while a person she already didn't respect just like stood there and then had the nerve to like blame her for it. So uh, she's not thinking super clearly at the moment and is, is, you know, kind of understandably angry. So... That's what we will do. You grab him by the collar. You're a butcher, Ermish shouts, trying to break free. You despise the gods and the temples. I only despise you, Ermish, you say. You shove him away, and he stumbles but maintains his balance and a few scraps of dignity. You and the initiate glare at each other as the laborers, um, frightened but exhausted, wonder what to do. At last, your mother appears, stomping back into view around the mountain peaks. Or, um, I, no, that's not what that says. I'm really sorry. At last, your mother appears, stomping back into view around the mounted heaps of earth that surround the collapsed pit. That makes a lot more sense. It's a damn mess, Paris says. Thefts. Three of our people dead. They tried to set fire to the granary, too. Are they still in town? Lincoln asks. Under it, your mother says. I've stationed guards at every rubbish pit and mine entrance. Everyone who's hurt, get to the old temple. Everyone else, back to work. We meet in the great hall at dusk. Then she looks at you and seems to notice for the first time that you're covered in dirt and blood. And you, come with me. She marches you back home as if she marches you. Uh, she marches you back home as this, if she has nothing better to do then berate you, but won't do it in public. You hear Paris quick footsteps behind you and wonder how you could explain that you did as much as you could. Um, yeah, so she definitely is, um, yeah, I mean, she's just, uh, however inadvertently witnessed her first death and, uh, and now her mother is, um, going to yell at her. So she's in a very despondent place and, uh, yeah, probably um, starting to question a little bit of the, the hero ideals that she's kind of grown up with. You did well, Para says. Oh, yay. That's unexpected. You stop checking your wounds. Your mother rarely offers praise. She inspects her bow and then buckles her short bronze sword to her belt. Our people are brave and clever, she says, but that won't protect them. There's something wrong with the trolls. They'll be back, but I'm not going to wait around for their return. Neither are you. Help out where you can. Uh, help out where you can today, but tomorrow morning, you and I are going to find their nest. Prepare yourself. The afternoon fast passes in a blur. Frightened faces. Swirling rumors. Damaged buildings. And immediate need in, in immediate need of repair. You clean and bandage your injuries, then help wherever you're needed. Hunters-turned-warriors range all around the town, armed with bows and short spears, until your mother orders them in at dusk so they don't shoot each other in the dark. 
or it says each another. I assume it either meant each other or one another, but we'll split the difference. Um, as night falls, townsfolk pour into the great hall. Eight pine pillars support the roof of the great hall, alternating in style. Four round pillars carved with images of reverie and forest are carved with images of rev- revelry and four square pillars carved to resemble the gods of love, war, knowledge, and life. Past a rectangular fire pit is a tall chair, smooth with age and attention, and Yun, the god of creation. And for your tried tribe, the god of things made well and beautifully arises above that chair. Uh, in a circle of beaten copper, holding eight tools in eight hands. Two long table hold as many people as can fit around them, and more people stand against the walls. No, your mother says, appearing beside you. I don't want you here. Um, she glances at Ermish, who is talking affably with a priestess of Phi from the Oak Tribe. Prepare for a trip to the pit, because I do not have time. Go. She practically forces you out the door. People watch you, curiously, as you leave. You consider what to do, realizing that this is an opportunity to hone your skills before another potentially lethal confrontation with the trolls. <clears throat> Um, so, I'm a keen reader. I check the old temples for documents that may teach me more about, um, about the scrolls. I know a little about medicine. I tend, I dig into the temple's reserve of herbs to heal my wounds. I pray to the gods, remembering the old oaths and promises. Or I take a blade off the wall and make sure it is ready for use. Let me see if we are still injured, because I men- it mentioned healing earlier. Uh, it's okay, we are still injured. Um, It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to gain some um, healing skill then. So... That is what we will do. You head to the old temple and gather what supplies you need to brew a poultice. It's a drain on resources, but a necessary one. And as you finally wash and bandage your scratches, you start to feel better. You'll be entirely healed by tomorrow. It's late and Para still has not returned, but you snuff out the candles and crawl up to your sleeping loft. You try to make plans for tomorrow. Instead, you fall into dreams. You are interrupted by your mother's return late that night, but then you dream again. You dream of the five strange idols you saw, and they seem to call from you, call to you from the buried place beneath the unfinished temples. You dream of finding a cave down into that strange place. You see dark tunnels, illuminated only by the single guttering flame of a lamp. The old is cold, and the, the air is cold and smells of damp earth. These are strange dreams, like none you've had before. Then, slowly, you recognize the weight of the earth over your head. A clay lamp flickers in one hand. In the other, you carry a, your naked sword. You wear only a plain tunic and your shroud, but your feet are bare. Uh, a smooth tunnel slopes down before you. Below, you hear the call of the idols. Behind you, creatures whisper and hiss in the darkness. The trolls. This is no dream. How did I get here? And that is this chapter. Um, I believe I want to take a little bit of a break here uh give my voice a little bit of a break i will be coming back um do you guys have a preference as to whether we switch to every tree in or do chapter three of Ponpara? because i am uh down for either one of those oh wait i didn't close skype <laughs> uh, my bad i thought i had now i have no, I have not. Oh well, it 
it won't close, but I, it's it's not a big deal. Either says the blind GM. TBC, do you want to make choices or continue listening to me make choices in a bit? Or um. It's 4.44, so maybe we'll take a break and come back at like 5.05 .05 or something. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Um, I'll decide then what we are going to do. Um, I'm going to get a little bit more coffee and uh, a little bit more water. so. Um, I will see you guys in about 15-20 minutes, and I hope you will both come back. Thank you. <laughs> 